In this video, we are going to go over how to use the GoGuardian Parent app. So to use this app, you'll first need to download it in your app store, whether that's the Google Play Store or the App Store on a Mac or iOS device. So either here in the App Store like this or in the Google Play Store that um, could look something like this or on your phone. So once you have downloaded it, then you will be asked to enter your email address. And it is important to choose the correct email address. It needs to be the email on file with your school. So it needs to be the email that you used with your school. Um, and that for us is the email with Skyward. So whichever email is the one you use with Skyward Family Access, that is the email that you'll use. And if um, that email doesn't work right away, then you can contact your um, school's admin or school secretary to uh, check which email is on file. So once you're in the app, this is what it will look like. And right there at the top, is a drop down menu. So if you have more than one student, you can toggle between your kids in that drop down menu. And down along the bottom are your options. And on the far right is settings. That's where it shows your account, your email. And you can um, check out the uh, terms, give feedback and log out there. There's also a really nice link to take you to the parent support. It's the learn more about um, link and there are a couple of great articles here um, that you can click on. The getting started is a nice one and the what is Go Guardian Parent. So both of these have some great information that you can click on um, to give you um, some examples of what the app can show you and um, some more information about how to use it. So that is a great resource within the app itself that you can use to um, check out and learn more about it. So um, the getting started actually is um, this that will walk you through all the steps that you need um, for setting up the app. So that's there in settings. The summary page is the first page that will pop up and it gives you the top five websites that your student has visited. It will show those there and the number of visits that they've gone to. Uh, last 30 days is um, what it will show, but you can also check the last two weeks, last seven days, and the last day. So those are along the top. It will also show the top five documents that they've been opening. However, um, there may be some limitations based on the permissions for those. So if the owner of the documents that they've been opening is um, someone else, then those might not show there. And then I'll show the apps and extensions that they are um, most frequently using. Then the next option down along the bottom is their browsing activity. So this will show you all the websites that they have been visiting um, in that last day. So it'll show you the date and then all of the websites and the time and the amount of time that they were on those websites. So you can scroll through and see their browsing activity. You can also click on those links and it will take you to that website. So you can see I clicked on that link and it took me directly to that website. So you can do that as well. Then filters is the next option here along the bottom. Filters allows you to block certain websites for um, your student using their district device. And so it does remind you that um, a lot of schoolwork is done online, so to be careful about the websites that you block, especially during distance learning. And so um, when you are adding websites to the filter list, make sure that it is not a website that they may use for school. So YouTube is one of the websites that um, is used frequently by teachers to share instructional videos. And so that may be one. Um, that students might be using um, for distraction, um, but it is also highly used for educational purposes in instructional videos. So that may be a tempting one to add to a blocked website, um, but your students will probably um, need access to that for their schoolwork. So instead of blocking that website, um, you can set up 
um, maybe some time to uh, not be online. And so you saw that I was able to remove that block website by clicking on it and dragging to the left. So the other option for limiting um, internet access is under time limits. You can pause internet access on a district device manually by clicking the pause button right there. You can pause it for the rest of the day. You can pause it for a short amounts of time. And um, you can click on the resume button to bring back internet access. This is a very nice feature. You can also set up an offline schedule. So um, you can choose the ad schedule. And so this is setting up the time when your students are offline. Um, so you'll want to pick times maybe in the evening um, when you don't want them to be um, distracted with screen time and being online. So um, you can set those times here. However, there is a limitation. If you want it to go overnight, um, it won't allow you to actually choose an end time that is uh, after the start time. It has to be after um, 9 p.m. So you'll have to set up two separate schedules, um, one that runs um, in the morning time and one that runs in the evening time. So you can set it up for um, your uh, evening to midnight and then midnight to um, whatever time in the morning. So here I'm doing my example um, where they're gonna be offline from 7 p.m. to midnight and then from midnight to 7 a.m. And so you can do that and you can set that for the weekdays and then uh, potentially you can set more offline time for the weekend. You might want that to be a little bit longer, give them um, some screen time breaks and um, maybe some more activity. So here we have our offline schedule right now for the weekdays. And you can add an offline schedule for the weekend as well. We've added that offline schedule for the weekend. You can see that um, we've got that ready to go. Now, if there's any time or maybe their um, homework schedule is a little bit more, you can disable any of those. So maybe they need to work a little bit longer than 7 p.m. You can disable that for any day that you need, or maybe they need to work on the weekend. You can um, come in here for the time limits and disable those individually, um, or you don't need to use a schedule and you can just use the pause button and manually um, turn the internet on and off or enable and disable the internet for their device with the nice pause and resume button right up there at the top. Um, this can also be helpful if maybe they just need a brain break for um, an hour or a screen time break. You can use that pause button um, right there. And then again, anytime you need to remove something, you grab it and or click on it on the right and drag to the left. So that's how you delete um, anything in the schedule or anything in the filter. And so setting up those time limits is really nice since um, the filters, um, especially for something like YouTube, that can be um, very useful for educational purposes. Um, you'll want to check with your teachers about potentially um, blocking any websites, but um, game websites are definitely um, websites that you could set up filters for. Um, so you've got your settings, your time limits, your filters, and your uh, summary and your browsing activity. And then along the top, you can uh, toggle between your different student accounts. And that is your GoGuardian parent app.